core systems. Perfect field service moments are core moments. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, my name is Dustin Coombe. I am the sales director for Sador in the UK. Um, yeah, um, one way or another, you've all found your way to this webinar today. And, and I'm joined by Craig Bloomberg from Core Systems. Um, we're going to take uh, the next 45 minutes to an hour to um, explore uh, SAP Business One as it relates to the field service industry. Um, and hopefully we can bring you some insights into a great solution um, that you might want to consider um, pulling into your company or maybe another company that you know of who, who acquires such a system. Okay. Um, just to start, uh, I wanted to briefly give you an overview of SAP Business One as it stands within the SAP stable of products. Um, historically, everyone, uh, most people are familiar with SAP as a uh, software provider that has, has implemented software for that large enterprise space. So we're talking about the the, the FTSE 100, uh, you know, large enterprise companies of this world, global conglomerates, um, you know, the big boys. Um, over, you know, the last 15 years or so, SAP has been putting more and more focus in the SME market, and that's where we get products like SAP Business One. It's not the same product as S4 HANA, or as you might have known it before, R3, okay? Sometimes you just call it Big SAP. <laughs> SAP Business One is its own product, built, priced for the SME market, okay? Um, today, SM, uh, SAP's focus is very heavy on, on the small to mid-sized market. When we say small to mid-sized market, we're talking about a company that turns over anything from, you know, between maybe a million pounds a year to maybe 50, or, uh, sorry, 50, 50 million pounds a year. Obviously, we can go above that, a little bit below that, all depending on the requirement of, of the company that we're implementing for. Um, across the world now, SAP Business One is one of the fastest growing ERP solutions for the SME market. Um, we've got over 52,000 customers running SAP Business One worldwide. Um, many localizations for different kinds of countries, uh, uh, for different countries, um, over 27 different languages, okay? Um, 300 software solution partners um, that are partnered with SAP to implement and support the solution, okay, with over 500 solution extensions, okay? And today we're going to be talking about one solution extension built around the field service industry, okay? Um, a bit about the solution stack. You can host SAP Business One on-premise or in the cloud. You have two database options. The, the kind of historic option would be the Microsoft SQL database. You can also run SAP Business One on SAP HANA. Um, today, we're going to show you SAP running on both database platforms and a little bit of the difference between the two. Above that, you have your SAP Business One application that your users use. That's what you use every day when you log into the system. And above that, we have the SDK. We have nice integration framework and a service layer where we can build on to SAP Business One with strong SAP certified applications. Um, as well as bringing on other solution ex extensions that extend the software into mobility, um, things like omnichannel retail um, and very industry specific solutions. Okay. Um, as mentioned, you know, SAP Business One standard comes with many core modules, you know, that every business needs. So, um, for example, financials, every business needs a financial system. Um, but then it also very quickly rolls into inventory, you know, potentially production, uh, CRM and opportunity management, servicing, so on and so forth, HR. Um, SAP Business One has been implemented across the world for many, many, many different industries and where, where it sets itself apart from other ERP applications is in its ability to be flexible and configurable um, to a large extent without doing any kind of customization or development on the software. So we have rolled SAP Business One out to project engineering companies, to retailers, okay, to chemical uh, engineering companies, to the aerospace industry. Today we're going to show you the field service industry and how SAP Business One can offer a really end-to-end -end solution um, for field service companies. Okay. A little bit about Sador, okay, I'm, again, I'm the sales director for Sador UK. Um, across the globe, we have actually about 350 co uh, consultants worldwide now. 
um, by the end of this year, we should have reached about 2,000 customers running SAP Business One. Um, we've got our own data centers. We also do some other products in other parts of the world. Um, but again, today we're focusing on SAP Business One. Um, just to let you know, Sador, we have a wide reach okay, across the globe for SAP Business One support. Um, and, um, and beyond that, we've got a lot of backing um, as far as we're, we're just a well-established company. We've got uh, outside of the SAP Business One space, you know, we have over 8,000 clients and 300 employees that do other products as well. But within our, our, our group, um, we can certainly offer you a, a high level of support, whether it's here locally in the UK or potentially with uh, a subsidiary of yours or someone who you know has subsidiaries in other parts of the globe, okay? Um, in today's demo, um, we're going to kind of, it's going to be twofold. First, I'm going to start with a bit of an SAP Business One demonstration where I'm just going to very lightly touch on um, some high level functions of SAP Business One as it would be used for head office administration. Um, you know, I hope in the process of my demonstration, you, you see that there's efficiency in the administration processes, processes. there's in, strong integration between roles and different departments and that really we can get information from almost anywhere okay, within the system. SAP has been very clever at building a system that, that we can access information very, very quickly when we need it. After that, I'm gonna hand over to Craig. Um, he's gonna do, uh, take things a little bit more to the front end, okay, to our field service agents and how they're gonna use the system and how that information is gonna get back into the administration part, okay, and, and how we're gonna actually build these customers. So how we're gonna allocate jobs how the technicians in the field are going to operate, and how we're going to do the billing for our field service customers at the end of the day, okay? And streamlining that whole process, okay? So again, um, at the end of our session today, you know, please feel free to get, get in contact with me directly. Uh, if you're in the UK and, and you have an interest in SAP Business One for field service, um, or if you're in any other part of the world, okay, and, and you want to implement this solution, um, get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with one of our local offices in your country, okay? Um, skipping over to the solution, this is SAP Business One on HANA, okay? So this is on a HANA database. You'll notice a nice, uh, a nice cockpit, we call this our cockpit, where we have all of our relevant dashboards and KPIs that, that I can tailor specifically for me. This is specifically what I want to see, okay? Um, we like now to make the user interface as simple as possible for the end user. So we'll put something like a, a bit of a, a workflow uh, process right onto their dashboard and they might be able to do their entire job right from this screen without scratching around the rest of the system and with, without scratching around the rest of the modules. That said, I'm currently logged in as Kate, okay? And Kate has access to the entire suite of modules within Business One, okay? Also, it's worth mentioning that SAP Business One is multi-company. Multi so even though I'm logged in as Kate, I can log into any other company as well that we might be running. So you might have one license, but be able to log into several companies. Okay, just, just to note. Um, when you see all of these modules, generally when you're engaging with a new system, you know that they go deep. You know, very quickly, if I look in the administration module and I'm trying to find something like my... Um, uh, authorizations, you know, it gets quite granular very quickly and you can get lost in the system. SAP has been very clever about making, finding things very simple. So if I'm looking for general authorizations, I can simply start typing it in the box and I get the general authorizations. And now I can show you how authorizations work in SAP Business One, okay? So right here you can see I have authorization groups, okay? So finance, sales, purchasing, inventory, and I can have different permission levels per group. Okay, across each module. So I can see inventory has access to uh, no authorization for financials um, whatsoever, whereas um, finance would. Okay, uh, you can see they probably have full authorization for most of those modules. This goes down to a user level as well. I can give different authorizations per module down to field level even for users. Okay. Um, only reason I'm showing you this is just I'm trying to highlight to you what the administration module is for, okay? Generally, um, this is where, where we train our customers to take care of their system. Initially, we set it up for you in the administration module as we implement the project, 
but then this is where you do all of all of the back end work just maintaining the system working our way down obviously SAP business one has a strong financial module okay and this is integrated throughout every other uh, module in SAP business one we ship with a standard chart of accounts okay but naturally most of our customers like to bring on maybe their own chart of accounts that, that we'll bring into the system for them as well you can run your accounts by either cost center or segmented chart of accounts and there's lots of options and flexibility around around this the, the trick to our chart of accounts is if we can get the chart of accounts right all of our reports just flow okay um, I don't want to focus on admin, uh, financials too much but obviously uh, if we have any questions later we can come back to it um, we do want to get to the field service stuff today, so I'm going to move on quite quick, quickly. We do have opportunity management within the system um, with really nice dynamic opportunity lifecycle reports. Okay, We have our quote to cash cycle and all the documents in between a quotation and actually getting goods delivered and invoicing a customer. Okay, um, Same on the purchasing side. But what I want to start touching on now is a little bit about data and, and how we carry certain kinds of data within the system. So if we look at business partner master data, okay, I want to look up one of my favorite customers, MaxiTech, which are right here, number one at the top. And immediately I can see all the relevant information about MaxiTech. Okay, I can see multiple contact people, okay, as I deal with many different people within an organization and maybe certain people need to be automatically put on certain documents and other people need to deal with other documents this all can be automated multiple addresses built to and shipped to I can specify certain payment terms okay I can specify new terms so all of my customers for example have their own payment terms credit limits commitment limits okay maybe some definable properties that I want to tag my customers against maybe some free text remarks if I want to carry attachments or contracts against some of my customers I can keep them in the system as well so this becomes a bit of a nice light document management system from this business partner master record I can also create an opportunity a service call okay I can create quotes sales orders uh, credit memos I can do everything right here from this record Again, SAP has built in more and more flexibility. So, so what I've asked the system to do now is just, you know, give me a quick snapshot of, of this customer and everything they've sort of been doing with me and their general health, okay? So I can see my total sales amount for this customer. Um, I can see the number of open service calls I have for them, which is currently zero. Um, gross profits, okay? And order fulfillment, receivables, okay? I get a nice quick overview, a 360 degree view of Maxi Tech as a customer, okay, and this goes for all of my customers or suppliers. I can get that kind of information. Further than that, I've got analytics running right next to this business partner as well. So there's a quick sales analysis for this customer, or maybe I want to see sales by product group for this customer, okay. And you'll notice as I move across different customers, I'm on Maxi Tech now, but now I've scrolled to John Lewis. I get their live analytics of their sales by product group, okay. Um, You'll notice at the top here, in the top right-hand corner, I have little orange arrows. And this is where our customers kind of start to jump up and down. Because anytime you see an orange arrow like this in the system, I can drill down and get more information. So if I click here very quickly, I can see every outstanding invoice for MaxiTech. And just like you can in Microsoft Excel or a little pivot table, I can double click and I can get that largest outstanding invoice that I'm interested in right to the top of my list. I can drill into that actual document, I can see what makes up that invoice, and I can see that my sales manager was responsible for that invoice, okay? I actually just want to create a quick activity here, okay? For, I don't know, we'll say Sophie, or Kate, or Sophie, one of my other employees here. We'll give it to Bob, and I want to tell Bob to please follow up, okay? When I send this to Bob with a little reminder, it'll jump into his calendar, and this link document, this invoice, will actually be attached to it. So now we're no longer using email to attach documents and pass things between departments. Okay, we can actually follow up and track who does what with the important information within our system. Okay, so that was just a little bit about business partner master data. Okay, and again, you can see I got to quite a granular, granular, granular level of detail without um, without too much effort. Okay, and when you can move around quite quickly between departments and activities without doing too much too much heavy work, okay, or too much manual work. On the other side, we have inventory master data. 
Kent SAP Business One. This is the things we buy and sell, okay? Um, again, I'll just do like a quick search for some different, different inventory items and I'll pick our um, medical imaging equipment. So for some field service companies out there, this medical imaging equipment might be something that you, you sell. This is a tube that goes on to a piece of equipment that you might be servicing, okay? Um, if you're a medical service uh, sales and service provider, you might be a, um, uh, a, a plumbing contractor where you're maybe installing boilers or, or a heating and air conditioning contractor where you have different kinds of items, but all the same rules apply, okay? For this medical imaging equipment tube, okay, which falls under the item group medical devices, I can see my general information. I could see, for example, serial or batch numbers. If this was an item that had a warranty associated with it, I could track that within the system. I can see all of my purchasing data, the units of measure that I purchase it in, as well as my sales data and the units of measure that I sell it in. My inventory data, so I carry this in a general warehouse, okay? But I also have different trucks that are carrying certain stock as well, okay? Or maybe cars on the road that carry different stock. And I can see what I actually have committed by order, okay? What I have on order with my suppliers and what I actually have available to promise to my customer. Okay, at the end of the day, across each warehouse and each truck. Now, what we can do is be very clever about which trucks are being sent to which jobs, right? So, if I get a call up and someone needs uh, their um, x-ray machine repaired and this tube is required, we know we cannot send truck two, three, or four. We know truck one needs to get on site with the right product at the right time. We've now avoided uh, uh, unhappy customer and we've made a happy customer by getting it right the first time with the right, with the right technician, okay? You'll also notice here I can manage minimum and stock levels across my warehouses as well if I'd, if I'd like to, okay? We have 64 definable, 64 definable properties for our items with free text remarks and images, okay, which all push through to that mobile tablet that your field service agents are gonna be using, um, and again, attachments as well, okay, for, for your items. Um, that's a little bit about the data. Obviously, this data works together in, in a sales pro, uh, process from quote to cash. And the way it does that is, is quite clever. You never have to manually re-enter information from one form to another. So if I had a sales order in the system, I could simply copy that sales order to an invoice, okay? Or I could copy part of that sales order to a delivery, copy the rest of it to another delivery and consolidate that onto an invoice, okay? And, and, and that's all done with just a couple of clicks. It's very, very simple. At the end of the day, um, you know, you're creating efficiency and, and you're also just creating a, a nice, um, I guess, uh, trail of, of documents that's easy to track. So for example, all these dashboards and KPIs that you can see on my screen at the moment, um, these aren't stagnant. Okay? These, these, are, these are all things I can actually work off. So if I wanted to see my open invoices, my open AR invoices, okay? I can quickly open that up and I can sort by due dates or amount or whatever I like, but let's just say I sort by due date and I find a very recent um, invoice in the system. Just pull that to the front. From here, I can get a nice history of everything that's happened with that invoice. So you can see I went from a sales quotation to, a to two separate deliveries because maybe I didn't have all the items at one time and then consolidated them into an invoice. I can see this invoice hasn't been paid yet. That's why it's on this list, okay? And that's what needs, that, that, that's what action needs to be taken at the moment. But even from here in this relationship map, I can drill back down to that original sales quote and see what happened there, okay? Um, so this is a little bit of the power of, of um, SAP HANA, SAP Business One on HANA. Um, beyond just some of the efficiencies we get in visibility of what we're doing, um, we also find that this is a, a really um, efficient tool for getting information out of the system. Every ERP or every system that, that you might implement into your company um, is a place to put information, but getting that information back out quickly in a relevant way is what, what gives us a return on investment on our on our application. That's what that's what that's what drives our business forward. That's where we start losing the weight of administration and we start moving um, at the speed of our customers. You know, and, and we can focus on selling and implementing our services as opposed to just keeping up with the paperwork. When I talk about reports, okay, it's things like 
for example, um, these dashboards, which I could create on the fly. If I wanted to quickly create, let's just say, a quick uh, a, qu a new dashboard for myself where I just want to see maybe gross profit across um, some of my customers, okay? I just want to see basic gross profit against all of my customers. I open this tool called Pervasive Analytics. And what SAP has done is they've taken all of that SQL query coding and all that table um, <laughs> kind of hieroglyphic terms and they've put it into layman terms for us to be able to create dashboards, just the general layman to be, a, to be able to drag and drop the dashboards they want. So I need to choose a base data set, okay? The base data set that's relevant to me. I want something in sales, right? And I want a single document transaction and I want air invoice header, okay? That's the data set I want to use. And then from here, like I said, I just want my gross profit, very simple, drag and drop, across my business partner name. Let me use business partner name, for example. And immediately, SAP HANA pulls the analytics together and there's my live dashboard with live information that I just created. I can now save this dashboard as, as uh, uh, we'll just call it gross profit. Um, BP. And that's saved. I can now close Pervasive Analytics and I can add that dashboard to my cockpit. Very simply. And you'll notice here, there's tons and tons and tons of predefined dashboards that come shipped with SAP Business One out of the box, okay? Um, and you can see I've got a couple of them ticked. Those are the ones that are exposed. But if I wanted to look at the, uh, the one I just created, gross profit by BT. I think I meant BP, business partner, but that's okay. I just tick that. The next thing you know, I'll have that on my dashboard as well. So this is a task that typically you would have to call your partner or you'd have to maybe call um, call maybe a developer in to create a new dashboard for you for, for existing systems. But now as a, as a user, I can start creating dashboards and creating the, um, the, the tools and reports that I want to see and exposing them um, for my own purposes when I want to and where I want to. Okay. So you'll see now at the bottom, there's our gross profit by business partner. Okay, there's another one I produced by a different, uh, earlier just for me based on different months. Okay. Um, again, uh, because we've got SAP HANA, which is in-memory technology where we can crunch data and crunch numbers very, very quickly, we can bring in really clever applications. For example, SAP has now created a very slick, uh, dynamic cash flow forecasting tool where I can literally drag and drop the time horizon for which I want to do a cash flow forecast for. And I can even say, you know, I can kind of start tailoring it and getting different versions of it. I can say, you know what, um, I want to look at different certainty levels and I want to prioritize maybe purchase orders as certainty level two, okay? And I'll save that. And dynamically, my cash flow looks dramatically different. Okay, because obviously I created a purchase, a massive purchase order in the system right before we did this demo. But as you can see, the uh, cash flow forecasting tool will pick up all the demands in the system over any period of time, and it will tell you what your what your what, what your outlook is. You know, and and you can get the you know five, ten different versions of this within a minute and decide what is the most appropriate and what is the most accurate. You can discuss this dynamically with uh, the leaders in the business. Um, as opposed to running one report after another that takes a long time and, and maybe you're doing all of this on Excel. Um, this is just a scratching the surface of using HANA technology to get us information very, very quickly. And again, I can export this to Excel and bring it to my boardroom or I can export it to PDF, okay, or to Word. Um, a very, very simple tool, for example, for getting information out of the system, Enterprise Search. So. Typically, in a large database with a lot of information, if you were to search for the letter I in an enterprise search, search function, <laughs> you might as well go make yourself a cup of coffee and come back in a half hour when the report is ready. But with SAP HANA, SAP Business One on HANA, I can search for the letter I, okay, and instantly I get back a report of every instance in the entire database where the letter I exists. And not only that, 
they break it down to the letter I in AR invoices versus credit notes versus business partners versus every document in the system. And I can hover over and see the details of these documents as well. Okay, so that's just another way that we're getting information out of the system very, very quickly. Beyond that, um, SAP Business One ships with a whack of standard reports, okay, across all modules, okay? And if we still haven't satisfied the need for reporting, at the end of the day, we spit everything out into pivot tables, okay, Excel pivot tables for our accountants to slice and dice that data any way they want, and that's live data, okay? That is just an overview of SAP Business One. Obviously, there's many more modules here that we haven't touched on, and we've just touched on, on, on the reporting functions and the administration functions on a very light level. Happy to go into some more detail on that at some other point in time. But for now, I'd like to hand over to Craig Bloomberg, who's gonna carry some of this into how it applies to field service and, and how we take some of this back office functionality and back office uh, integration and efficiency and apply that to the field service industry and get the most out of it, okay? Thanks for that, Dustin. I'm just gonna change myself to be the presenter and um, you'll be able to see my screen now. Um, obviously, my SAP looks a little bit different to what Dustin's just shown, and the reason being is uh, he was showing you on HANA, really nice, slick, and, and extremely sexy uh, UI, whereas I'm looking at it from a SQL standpoint. And nonetheless, for today's demo, um, on the field service aspect and element, uh, we're not really going to touch too much of SAP, uh, except for the billing and the creation of the service call. So, <clears throat> imagine... Um, you need um, a technician on site at one of your customers. Um, as Dustin mentioned, perhaps you're a, a boiler service and the boiler's broken and customer calls in. I'm just going to quickly create a service call. All right. Um, all the information that Dustin's already spoken about with regards to business partners and so forth, really simple and easy to use within the system. Um, Boiler broken, for example, um, I can then go in and I can search for different, it came in via an email, configuration, and the call type is installation. Um, <clears throat> this service call now uh, is created inside of the system. Obviously, you have full audit trails and a full history of everything you are doing in the system. And <clears throat> now we go on to the second persona, and imagine in a in the real world uh, example, you would have a call center. Call center would take the call. Um, that call center or customer, um, let's say, center would ultimately then create the job. And then you have the second persona, which would be the planner. And the planner themselves is really where the key element fits in. And, and this is exactly what we're looking at at the moment. Um, the planner has the ability to look at all their technicians. Okay. Uh, you can also use different filters, so I can filter by specific technicians, by spe uh, specific skill levels, and the reason being is that your boiler is broken, you may, you may have a Valiant boiler, for example, and only uh, certified Valiant staff members could um, actually fix that. Um, so you have the ability to go in and create what we call different skills. Uh, imagine you have uh, subsidiaries. Um, across the world, um, you know, and some guys are saying, well, we need a specialist technician, but he needs to speak a certain language. Um, so obviously there's no valid from or to date on a language, but per, um, perhaps on a, a certification. <clears throat> and within a certain time frame, for example, Jason Butler, three months prior to that, we could set up a rule that automatically the manager gets an email to say, Jason's certification is coming to an end. Please rebook it. Uh, he has three months left on on that uh, skill uh, set. So we have all our different <clears throat> technicians on the left. At the bottom, what we have is our unallocated service calls. So the service calls that have been created in SAP that we've just done. I'm just gonna filter on installation to make it a little bit easier and you will see the first one over here is the um, 232. Ah, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. I clicked on it while that was filtering. So if I just click on that, you'll see the service call. I can either double click it or go into the page that was just opened, or I can see it on a widget. Uh, generally for me, widgets are much easier because you have everything in one screen. So I can go in and see the customer, contact person, call <clears throat> a norm um, and say, you know, is this date and time working for you? But 
the real key here as well is that as soon as I plan this on the plan board, and um, this may look a little bit small, so I can change it from one week to, for example, one day. Um, you have the ability to do the necessary. I can also adjust the time that from 10 until 12:15, basically, um, that's when I am going to go and send that technician, Jason Butler, to the job. All right. So at the moment it's planned; it's not yet released. This means that the technician doesn't have this job as a to-do at the moment. Uh, it's just for the planner. You can imagine it's quite a, it's depending on the type of industry and what we see in industry. It's really, really complicated if you have to continuously change things. So it may be that you plan all the um, on against the technicians, your planning board, and then you go in and you release your assignment once you're happy with everything that's um, inside of your plan. You'll see this has become green. That means that it's been released and now the technician um, will be able to go in and do the necessary. So just to recap, what we've done is create the service core. You saw it come in as an unallocated or an unplanned job. We've planned it against Jason Butler. And now the third persona is actually the technician. And if you give me two seconds, I'm just going to mirror my iPad onto, onto the screen. Just let me know when you can see that. Should be right about now. All right. Um, so I've got the iPad on my screen. Um, I have, obviously, I'm an administrator in terms of my permission set. So we're not going to cover absolutely everything um, inside of the solution today. I'm more than welcome to contact Dustin and, and we can run through this with you. Uh, but basically, you have a number of different options available, as you can see, all the way from opportunities, sales, sales documents, and so forth. But today's session is on the field service element. So we're going to go in and look at that activity that we've just planned um, for that job, for the boiler, go in and um, pretty much do our work. So technician now, as you can see, gets a job. He can click on this little blue icon and navigate directly to where that job is located. All right. And we use something, just so you're aware, customer equipment cards. Now, Dustin spoke about items. Each item can have a customer equipment card. And the real reason being um, in industry, and this is a standard SAP Business One function, is that an equipment card may have a different address to where the company address is. So when we talk about that, imagine heavy machinery, for example, where a company has purchased it and it needs to go to a plant somewhere, um, and that's piece of equipment may have a very, very unique address, could be a geo-located geo, um, address as well. It doesn't need to be an actual physical address. And, um, and we will be able to pick that up directly by um, the system and by clicking on this little blue icon. I'm going to click on the actual um, boiler broken. You will see that this then opens up the activity itself. And my iPad, for some reason, is going all over the place. So I may switch over. There we go. We'll, we'll try that. If it continues to jump around, sorry, I have a really old iPad. Um, if it continues to jump around, I'll just um, share my iPhone. But basically, we have an entire um, overview. Pretty much, I can go into a customer. This business partner that's going to be displayed over here is exactly the same information inside your SAP Business One. And I think that's the key here, is SAP Business One is your master. So everything comes and is drawn from your ERP. So there's a single source of the truth. And that's really important to know. All the different components, such as your contact details. And imagine the power of your technician, sales people, any person that's on the road speaking to your customers have a full history of everything that's happened. So when we talk about service calls, if I click on the, the actual service calls over here, I will get a full list of every service call that ever carried out directly for this customer, all open and closed one. The same thing applies for any sales documents, activities, anything that you have, you will be able to go in and see inside the system. So what's really cool now is that we have what's called workflow steps. So we try to instill inside of your technician's day job is that everyone works the same. If you buy a McDonald's burger, McDonald's in the UK, in uh, anywhere in Europe, it should all taste the same or should all be the same. The service should be the same. And that's exactly the same thing. Single 
way to do business. So really, we call it hard to copy. So all your technicians follow the same procedures and processes. So when I click on accept, you will see basically what happens now is that we have what's called um, a workflow step. You will see that it's in accept, and this now will begin to transfer data back to the back office. This means that your planners and your managers can all go in and see, well, he's accepted the job. I don't need to replan this. Really, really cool. If you wanted to, and I'll show you in a little while, you can set up what's called business rules. Now, business rules are extremely important because once this is accepted, we can send an SMS or an email directly to anyone. If I click on travel now, imagine as a customer, when the status travel has been selected, your customer gets an email to say, Jason Butler has um, begun travel he is X amount of kilometers away and he will arrive at an estimated time of, you know, two, three, whatever, um, this afternoon. So really, really powerful. And these are real world examples where you can improve your customer satisfaction as well as making your, you, your field service team the best field service team there, there is out there. Now we've said we've traveling, we arrive on site, I click on working. The way my system's configured automatically pops up to say, well, create the mileage because you traveled from A to B. And over here, travel from A to B. And my distance, let's say, is 150 meters because we one minute. But I can also go in and just change the travel duration to say it was an hour. And I can save that. So what you'll be able to see at the bottom as well is now you have all mileage, and this is really the overview of the job. Really, really, really cool. So technician has all of this at his fingertips. While he's working, he can go in and call what's called a checklist. Now a checklist is super important because a checklist allows you to go in and literally capture data. And when I talk about capture data, the, the data that you're capturing is really key here, is once again, you're following a standard set of procedures, processes that every technician does. Is this the correct machine, for example? Yes, this is the correct machine. And he clicks on the next. Now, we also have the ability to go in and, and determine which steps and, and which questions to ask a technician based on his selections. So if I click on repair, for example, and I click on next, you will get repair, as you can see. But if I go back and I say, well, hang on a second, this was a maintenance job, click on next, a whole different set of questions. So really, really cool. The tube was replaced, the number of isolators, and as you can see, it says expected between five and 25. No longer do your technicians write unreadable words on a piece of paper or select the wrong thing. So if I go in and say 30, done, error message cannot be higher than 25. Come on, guys, you need to follow the instructions. And I can go in then and say there were five of those, height of 10, and you will be able to see the height times the width. This is an auto calculation field as well to show you what we can do. I say done, and that will go to 60. But now a tube was replaced, really interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in. I've just clicked on this little uh, pin over here. Click on the add media. All right, camera roll, save that. All right, I can also go back into the image and click on the edit function. And once again, extremely powerful over here for your technicians, because as you are well aware, some grumpy customers out there and they always say, well, your technician broke this, your technician scratched that. I can go in, I can draw and say, well, when I arrived, that scratch was already there. This is gonna be on the job sheet. So when the technician finishes his job and the customer ends up uh, signing to say he was there and everything is correct. He's basically signed to say, yes, there was a scratch before that. Was this successfully finished? Yes, the customer will, in this case, may very well be the technician signature. I save that. And what I do now is I close the checklist. So my checklist is done. Okay, my job is done. What we've done is we've now still been working. So what you'll be able to see is we're still working um, in our working step, if I click on finish now, I have the ability to go in and I'm just gonna change this instead of four minutes, just to make it a little bit more realistic. So when we look at the billing, um, it just builds something a little bit nicer than a couple of cents, a couple of pounds. 
And <clears throat> while I was driving there, I had to go in. I had to put in some expenses. I was on the M6, so um, had to drive. There were some travel expenses. Uh, it was six quid. And I can go in and also take um, ad media and go in and take a, an actual um, picture of that receipt. Once again, I will just take a picture of the receipt, save that, so the back office gets everything in the single system. In SAP Business One, the master will house all this information. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the checkout process. Okay, the checkout. Here we're standing in front of our customer. This is what we've done. You can see an overview of everything. Please will you sign to ensure that you're happy with our service and can you rate our service? Happy, sad. Yeah, I thought the service was fantastic. So I'm going to save that. Checkout is now complete. Don't worry too much about the uh, the reports. Uh, we have two different types of reporting mechanisms on and offline. And what I'm going to do, this is just an offline report. I'm going to continue the checkout. And I'm going to show you this report inside of the system as well. So we have our service checkout report. And the key thing, and one of the main areas of the system, which I haven't yet touched on, this is all offline. And now what you can see is a little red dot, which means we need to synchronize to send this back to SAP. Technicians are often in places that don't have connectivity. And this is the key area. That, that's why it's offline. So I'm going to synchronize, send everything back to SAP Business One. And while I'm doing that, I am going to just jump into two areas that I think are very useful for you guys to see, um, what's called our file system. Now, a file system is something inside of the application where you can allocate different files to different pieces of equipment, different uh, objects. You can have your own installation guides, everything that you need directly on the device. And this is also very useful. Like Dustin showed you earlier, that medical imaging equipment, if I click on the file library, Okay, and I click on that x-ray, I can go in directly and see an entire PDF of what to do, how to install it. I can also go into my items in stock, and I can search, for example, on x-ray, and the same image, and what I can do now is I can go into my file revision and see it from there so it's really useful I can do it at the time of when I really need that information so from a technician not only are we building happier customers but we're also building happier employees which ultimately will lead into more revenue quicker return on investment faster jobs that are being completed because it's easy for them to get this data easy for them to use and really really useful stuff I'm just going to stop mirroring my iPad. As I say, we don't want to waste too much of your time today. So if any of this is really interesting, please feel free to shout out to Dustin. Um, I just want to finish the process by showing you now that the job is complete. So there's a solid blue line. If I double click on that over here, I'll just wait for this to load. We have what's called our service checkout PDF. All right. Signature. And I also have my checklist. Remember the photo we took? Scratch, maintenance job, 5, 10, 6, 60, signature. Really, really, really powerful, guys. This is unbelievable stuff. And if I have to go back into SAP Business One and refresh this, what we'll be able to see is I can go in, all right, and I, I click on my activities over here. This was my plan date. All right, really useful. And if I actually go into my efforts over here, you will see what my actuals with two hours. I can go in and have a look directly at that job. 150 pounds for hourly, my six quid. All right, I just have to wait a couple minutes. As I said, it's offline, so that image will then transfer through. And my travel expenses, because I said I'd, I traveled 450 um, meters, or whatever that may be, a chargeable amount of 50. And I can also see the materials, if I allocated or used any materials directly on the job. So to finish off, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my approval service calls for today. And approval is something a little bit different. So approval today is this, the boiler. Um, I approve to bill everything can go in once that's approved it's going to be available for me in my billing wizard and the billing wizard is nothing more than an automated invoicing service 
I can create a draft document. If I had multiple uh, line items for different jobs for the same customer, I can just put it on a single invoice, for example. Click on Next. Click on Finish. This document is now uh, executed. It's finished. Document 456, hourly service charge, our two travel expenses. All right, I go into the service call. I refresh that. It's closed. Related documents, our invoice. End to end, we have everything we need directly inside of the master. Once again, all of this information is still available for you to go in and have a look directly in our workforce management. So everything is linked. Really cool. Um, I just wanted to show you two things quickly. Uh, screen customizer uh, configurations, I'm not going to go into it, but basically you can configure your iPhone, iPad, Android device screens now um, to make it even easier for your technicians. And I change the language as well, so translations. If guys don't like to call it business partners and they prefer to call it customers, um, you can go in and do that. As well as if you have what's called, as I said to you, the business rules and notifications, and if I just open this up, uh, you'll be able to see under the business rules, attach a checklist and send it, for example, to your manager. Um, you can go in and you can really do anything you like. One of our newest samples is notify the customer when the time of the technician's arrival. Um, so if my email, if I had it open, it will email me to say Jason Butler was traveling and he would arrive on site. So just some of that uh, powerful stuff. Um, this is the checklist we basically did. I just quickly wanted to show you the elements. You can drag and drop these and you can create as many of these checklists and process flows as you like. And it's really, really super simple and super easy. Um, very, very, very easy to, to do. Um, for the planner, the persona of the planner, he no longer needs to flick around different solutions. He has everything he needs. All the details from SAP are now available for him inside of the actual workforce management tool. So he can go in and do everything he needs. Obviously, permission groups are there to enable to either say, yes, he can change certain fields or not. Um, that obviously exists. And to add to those reports, those really nice uh, pervasive analytics that Dustin was showing in, in HANA, uh, we have predominantly for the, this is predominantly for the field service element of it, number of calls open by customer, by priority. So you can, uh, the, the actual planner can go in and, and quickly get an idea and an overview of exactly what's happening. Here you can uh, deliver as many um, of these dashboards as you like. And we can also preview any previous report. So if someone asks the, um, the planner to say, can you quickly get X, Y, or Z, he has the ability to go in and do that quite quickly. I just want to show you an object's rating. Um, so if I do 010117 and I refresh that, um, remember when we were signing the device as the actual customer and we rated the service, here you see Jason Butler has got eight ratings of 100%. Super happy with him. Uh, but you can imagine this in any checklist. If someone says, I need to see a checklist of a job 232, you can put in the parameter of 232 and that uh, checklist will be displayed. So really, really, really useful and power, uh, powerful. Um, I'm going to hand over to Dustin, just if there are any questions. And um, at this point as well, um, I would just like from uh, Core Systems and from myself to thank you for your time. Uh, what I am going to do, uh, I see Dustin has just muted himself. So Dustin, you can unmute yourself and any questions, guys, you are more than welcome to, um, to ask us both. I, I just saw one question um, pop up relating to uh, price. Um, and obviously, uh, if you want to drop me an email, um, dc at sater.uk, or just give me a call if you don't already have my contact details, please do so. Um, we would probably just, just take the opportunity to you know, have a 15, 20-minute phone call where we can understand your requirements, licensing requirements, size of the company, and, and, and um, you know, different people that might be using the system. And then we'll be able to give you a rough cost um, estimation, but it's, uh, it's hard to do so without any information. Um, but uh, if there are any more questions, feel free to ask them now. Uh, there's one more question that's come in, just asking if the field service is available on the HANA platform, because I only showed it on the SQL. So the answer is yes, it's available on HANA and on SQL. Um, I just have a SQL um, laptop, and uh, I have no access to a HANA database. 
Um, once again, if you, if you want to know the, the, basically the power behind HANA, I would highly recommend you get in contact with Dustin. Um, he can show you a lot more really cool functionality and our entire solution stack works on both HANA and on SQL. Great. If, if that's it for now, I'd also like to say thank you um, for everyone who joined us today. Again, um, if you have any further questions, whether for a UK implementation or any implementation of Business One um, across the world, uh, get in touch with me, dc at sador, S-E-I-D-O-R dot U-K, dc at sador dot U-K, and I'll put you in touch with the relevant people if I can't help you myself. Um, and again, thank you for, for joining us. Great. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Core Systems. Perfect field service moments are core moments.